So in this uh, demonstration, we will uh, briefly show the mechanisms about uh, requirements management in System Weaver. Uh, so in this case, we're looking at the system analysis step where we create product requirements that then go into the function development phase in the process. And what we will be looking at is how we pick up the requirements coming into the specific function that we develop, and also how we create traceability from the functional requirements to the product requirements or system level requirements that we get. So we can first look at how we create the requirement quite simply in the tree. Uh, we can either do that by right clicking, uh, saying new requirement, or we can choose an easier way, which is standing on one already existing requirement and just pressing enter or return uh, key. And by doing so, we get uh, a pre-filled uh, dialog where we can just write the name of the requirement. So let's call it pressure requirement uh, like that. So now the requirement is created and we can now start to type some kind of text in here. I just write some letters just to show how it works. Now once we've done that we can look at the pressure monitoring complete analysis function which is the example that we're looking at here and we also then have a view which shows us the outbound status of the requirements. So what we see here is that we have eight requirements that are not handled and what we would like to have is of course eight requirements that are mapped from the functions development phase. So right now we have only written those eight requirements. So if I click in the pie shot, it will highlight those eight requirements that we obviously have not yet uh, done something with downstream. When we're done with our requirements and uh, are happy with the content, before we pass it on or, or ask the downstream activities to do some work on it, we should release our set of work. Uh, how to do that is uh, by selecting it in the tree. I click and shift click and then right click and select the release items which will then completely release my package of requirements and we see here that the status now is released for all those areas so in this specific methodology we have already associated the pressure monitoring analysis function with the pressure monitoring keyword which means that whatever is interested in looking at pressure monitoring as such in the downstream activities, in this case, our function has also connected the function to the pressure monitoring keyword, which means that we can from this derive the inbox of the pressure monitoring function. And this is also what we do in this configurable grid view where we can show the requirements. And we see here the eight requirements that are coming in to to be received by the pressure monitoring function definition. And as we also can see here, there's nothing right now that is mapping towards those uh, requirements from the system level. So in this case, we are looking at the function pressure monitoring, and we have already associated that, as you can see, with the pressure monitoring keyword here. When we start work with the requirements and receiving the, the incoming requirements and writing new requirements, we look at the, the view that we have up here, which is the requirements management or requirements mapping view. By selecting that, we get this outline and we see here already now we have in the pressure monitoring a requirement written, but it's not mapped anywhere and it's in version one. We also have on the right side here, the incoming requirements or the inbox, which is uh, automatically populated by the fact that we are associated to the pressure monitoring function ID or keyword and in this case also the same pressure monitoring keyword. So the work now is really to make sure that you have written requirements over here that relate to or associate to one or more requirements on this side. So in this case it's kind of obvious that the pressure threshold requirement here has something to do with the pressure warning level for instance. Uh, we see here that this requirement says that it should be 4 newton with an accuracy of plus minus 1 newton and here we've said that if it exceeds 3 newton this is then the warning shall be raised and thereby we say that this requirement meets this requirement and by clicking the map button we have now created a, a trace from this pressure threshold requirement to the pressure warning level requirements on the system level. So if we continue then working and trying to meet also the rest of the requirement sets here, we can then start creating requirements in this view by just creating new requirements here in the same structure. Uh, in this case, we can just write uh, rec, oops, sorry, uh, rec one, and we can create maybe a 
rec2 as well. Uh, let's see, sorry, uh, here, new requirement. Let's do a rec2. Okay, uh, so now we've created two requirements. The first one we intend to use to meet the two top ones indications through to toothbrush and depression monitoring requirements. So in this case, I will then look at those requirements here, read them and see what they say. And then I can combine those two, for instance, and say that, okay, these two requirements I meet by writing the following requirements text. But once I've done that, I can then select those two requirements and say that I want to map them to this requirement. So now I have two requirements mapping to this requirement one. And let's say that requirement two will take care of the rest of the requirements here. So I'll just look through these and see, yes, okay, this is what they say. And I then write some kind of requirement for the purpose of uh, receiving those requirements. And then I go through them and do the mapping just as before. So by doing this, I will now complete the mapping exercise. So which means that I have now three requirements on the function level that takes care of the eight requirements from the system level. So in the view here, you also see that when I select the requirements on the, on the different sides here, they will highlight the requirements on the other side that are associated to uh, the specific requirement that I select. So I can look from both ends here to see, okay, where do I actually hook up my uh, requirements uh, to meet, to, to find out where, where it's uh, connected. So again, if I, if I then want to filter the list or minimize it, I can also use these filter possibilities uh, on the lower end here. So if, for instance, if I click in the match box, it will only show me the ones that are actually associated with the requirement that I'm currently looking at. This is to minimize the, the scope of what you're looking at. So these are all very useful mechanisms to work with uh, the requirements editing and, and understanding and seeing what is actually happening on the inbox and what do I have to do on my on my uh, meeting or my receiving end to uh, to meet the requirements in my inbox. And I would say that this actually combines many of the mechanisms that you find in traditional requirements management tools and even makes it a little bit better because when we talk to our customers, we usually hear that they want to see the complete picture. They want to look at it and edit the information as if you were working in a specification. At the same time, you want to have an overview of what you're actually trying to meet or the, the sort of the receiving end. And I think this view here makes a perfect combination of the two because you can quite easily scroll through the input and you will see the actual requirement texts in the, the uh, lower part here. And you can also browse and edit on this side so that you get a feeling that you're actually working uh, in the context. And since the shifting here is quite quick, you see the texts uh, immediately when you select a new requirement. Uh, I would say that this is a very good um, balance and actually good overview from all kinds of perspectives and not just the way that you might be used to working in a Excel-like uh, fashion where you also manage your, uh, your requirement links. In this view also, the editors down here are like usual. You can double click like the usual description editor and work in a, in a more uh, editor fashion, um, for instance, inserting tables and so on, so that you can enter information in those tables. And this is also one of the few places in System Weaver where you do have a save button because so far there has been nothing stored to the System Weaver server. But when we press this save button, it will actually save the information and update the, the editing field in the, the view. So the final step in working with the requirements um, yeah, as far as this goes is to, of course, then release your current version of your pressure monitoring function. And it's the same mechanism as we did on the top level here. We just select the pressure monitoring function and we uh, shift click on the lower uh, lowest part of the in the tree here. And then we use the release option to close all the items and make sure that it's all a, a closed package that you cannot edit anymore. But as usual, in most development uh, processes, you find out that there are changes that you need to do. And in order to look at this, I will now show how the, the changes drive also changes on the lower levels and how you can detect what is usually called suspect links in, in requirements management or, or broken links even um, that you have. So in this case, I will just show uh, very simple how you create a new version, edit the requirement and how you find out that there has been a change in the intake of the, the function. 
So to start, we need to open up this pressure monitoring analysis function for uh, editing. And you do that by using the new version and replace mechanism, which creates a new version, uh, version 2 in this case, and then brings it into this context. You can, of course, create versions just uh, stand alone and work with them in, in, a, in a single uh, operating way. But in this case, we do the editing directly into the structure here. So, as you see, we've now created version 2. It is in work. It still has uh, the relation to the requirements package, which is still in version 1 and in CS released. Now, if we want to change requirements in here, one or many, we will need to open up also the requirements folder for editing. So that's what we do by doing new version or place also there to create version 2, where we now can make changes to the requirements in that package. So let's say now that we notice that there is a misspelling, a spelling error here, in this case, in the pressure requirement. So let's fix that. Uh, now, in general, I should say that you should probably not do just typo uh, fixing and creating new versions for that purpose. So really, if you want to do that, you should probably also have some other meaningful reason to actually edit your requirement. But let's say here now that we are changing this requirement requirement so now i hopefully have spelled it correctly and let's say that we also know now that we will have some need for a, a table for instance uh, let's insert that and write some stuff in it and even change some other parts in the text here so uh, we save that requirement let's say now that yeah we're kind of happy with the way this works and we yeah we think that our job is done this means that we can now again release this complete package. In this case, I know that I will only be releasing the top levels here and this requirement. So the other ones are still in release, but I can still just uh, shift click at the bottom here to get a complete set. This will lead to some warning messages when I try to release this because the, the CS release stuff is already in released status. But let's run that and you can see how that works, but that's nothing to worry about. It's just the way it should be. So. Again, everything is now in released status. So looking now at the pressure monitoring function, we will see that we have got some suspect links now and some uh, notifications here that there are things going on on our incoming side where we see that the pressure requirement, you see now it's gone from version 1 to version 2, which is exactly what we did just recently. We just cha changed that. And it also highlights here that it is part of this relation. So we probably then... We now have a decision to make if we want to just update the linkage between those requirements to say that, yeah, but this requirement REC2 is still valid for this change, so we can just update it. Or we might need to make a new version of REC2 to actually make some change in it, which is probably the more common way. So what we do then in this case is we select uh, these two requirements, we will now see that we should bring a new, let's say that we need to update uh, this requirement. And since we have a status here, let's bring this out a little bit so we see the status, it's in release. We need to now open up this, this package for editing. The way to do that is on the top level, we will need to then introduce a new version of the function. We do that by clicking here and we say, now we have version two and we will also open up the container for uh, changes. So once we have created the new version here of the pressure monitoring function and the requirements container, which contains the functional requ function requirements, we now have to decide what we shall do with this suspect link. So as I mentioned before, we can either decide to just say that, yes, this requirement too is still valid for this version. And then we only need to say that we can fix the right version side, which means that we will update this side to be mapped to version 2 instead of version 1. If we want to update this requirement to meet this change, which is probably the more common outcome, we just select the requirement and we say that we want to create a new version in this context. We say OK. We bring in now version 2 and what you see here is that it also tells us now that we are currently mapped to version 1, but it should probably be version 2 since that is what is actually put here into the context. So you can kind of see the mapping part as being a separate element that has a pointer to the version 1 right now on requirement 2 and a pointer to version 1 of the pressure requirement. So what we need to do now is fix both the left version and the right version and, of course, make the change in the text. So in this case, we see here that this is the requirement to meet. And then maybe we would like to have uh, 
12, 13 instead left side. So we just take that value and put it in to this table here uh, like this. So now we've made a change. You can, of course, view these versions and see what the differences are. So now before we decide to update on the left side to say that we bring in version 2 uh, in the mapping, we can do that by saying fix left version and then we will automatically get this version view so that we can compare what is the difference between version 1 and 2 and then we can say yeah this is correct we will want to bring in version 2. Uh, and on the other side I need to then say also okay so shall we fix the right side version as well and yes we shall do that and then we click fix right version and we get the same situation that we can see okay what are the differences between those requirements and we can see those differences between version 1 and 2 in this view and then I say okay on this as well and now you see all the suspect links or the the highlighting of suspect links is now gone because we have now fixed it we have updated to version 2 on this side we have updated to version 2 on that side and we have also updated the mapping so that it is version 2 that is connected to version 2 and then to finish off that work if we're happy with the actual content that we have we just go in here and we say that we want to release uh, the items that we now updated and put them into release status saying okay and now we have all come back to a situation where I have a nice clean view and it has all the linkage done as it should be. And when we then move up now as the final step to check from the analysis function owner side and looking at the outbound requirements, it now gives me a completely green pie chart showing me that all my requirements are taken care of downstream. Another interesting feature is the capability to look graphically at the traceability from the requirements on various levels. So for instance, if we now select one of the requirements here, uh, the pressure requirement, we can use the impact graph to see how this requirement is uh, taken care of on lower levels. So in this case, you see the product requirement itself, pressure requirement, this one, and we see the requirement that meets this requirement on the functional level. Uh, which is highlighted by clicking on it in the graph. Uh, if we look from the other side, we can select the requirement 2 down here and see how this, the traceability of this requirement is, is connected upwards. So we have the same requirement here, and we now see that we have these five requirements on the product requirements level that it is taken care of. Now, as you add additional requirements downstream on the design levels or whatever levels you work on, you will then see the wider, the complete traceability chain in this view so that you can easily find any impacts that any change in a requirement on any level can have on your, your other requirements or designs. In this particular case, the red frames around the requirements uh, notifies you that there are no test cases yet written or connected to those requirements. Uh, so that is what is um, signaled by the red frames. So once you add test cases to the requirements, they will instead become black.